difference between this league and our team is we got Derrick Henry. Okay? Congratulations, man. Yeah. Franchise record, total touchdowns, man. I love our mentality, bro. I love how we're a family. Every day we come to work, no matter what. In the, in the game, the situation, no matter what happens, we sit together. Let's keep doing that. Let's keep building. Being one to know each week. Let's get better this week, though. Let's go. Hey, family on three. One, two, three. Family. Tighten up. From the Bet MGM studio, welcome to the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. With the head coach, I'm Mike Keith. Your Tennessee Titans have won five in a row after Sunday's 17-10 victory over the Houston Texans at NRG Stadium. Listening to Derrick Henry talk to the team in postgame, really measured about the win, saying, hey, this is great, but we got to keep doing what we're doing you have to be pleased with the buy-in right now. Sure. I mean, I have been for, for – and I've mentioned this before, but some of these guys that are now – we've been together, myself, personally, for five years. You know, Derek and Ben and Kevin. Um, you know, there's a few more guys that we've had, and it's just – you know, I'm thankful for them. I'm thankful that they've, you know, like Derek said, come to work each and every day, and we figure things out, and we have disagreements, and we have some good times, and we'll figure – you know, try to figure out a way to win each week. You don't have your quarterback, Ryan Tannehill, so you understand it's going to be a different challenge. You set the way to get there. They followed the path, and they executed it in all facets. Yeah, they did, and I think the message at halftime was let's just come together. Let's all be a little tighter. Um, let's, let's, let's get up. I mean, the thing that I love the most is I asked them to get up. I asked everybody to get in it. We tried to get them to return the, open, the kickoff of the second half, and we've got every player that's uh, on the sidelines up standing, encouraging guys. And uh, it was like that throughout the second half. All right, let's take a look at Mike Vrabel's six-pack. We're going to have a lot of defense in let's this. Let's see what we got tonight. I here, think Mike. you're going to like this one. Christian Fulton coming through with his first INT of the year. This guy is playing some super football. He, he is. He, he just needs to stay consistent and doing each and every week. But, you know, they tried to go 13 personnel. Uh, they, they thought that they got man, which they did. They went to uh, check and tried to get a man beater, a little rub. Christian wasn't having it. He stepped in front of it. Pretty similar to what it looked like last week, uh, except this time uh, Christian didn't keep his feet and wasn't able to, to get some return yards, but played a very consistent game. Christian Fulton's fourth career interception, stopping a drive in Titans territory. We remained scoreless in the first quarter when one of the big challenges of the day shown right here, stopping running back Damian Pierce. How about a little Big Jeff? Yeah, they try to slip a little draw in here and uh, a little delayed run action. Big Jeff with his hands inside on the rise. And uh, he can take people wherever he wants to when he's got them like that. So that, that's the thing that I've been most proud of is his the way he's embraced the technique and the development and continuing to play within our defense and make the plays that he's supposed to make. Big men aren't supposed to be pushed around like that. Uh, Kenyon <laughs> Green is an outstanding young prospect. Well, he had his hands full right yes, there. Yes, he did. Jeffrey Simmons with the big play. All right, let's take a look at Bud Dupree bringing the energy back and getting the pressure in this ball game when the Titans need it. Well, you can see the, the this is a cover sack. I mean, that's, that's what it is. I mean, the guys were out there covering. Um, the quarterback had to progress through. And again, we collapsed the pocket. That was a defense where we needed to make sure we had great rush lanes. Bud did that. And that's the example of the defense working together, tight coverage, taking care of the quarterback scramble lanes, and then letting the play come to you. Bud Dupree, two games back, a couple of sacks, but 12 quarterback pressures, his energy making a difference. Yeah, he runs and chases to the ball. You know, I mean, we, we've got high expectations for Bud, and, you know, he needs to keep doing that and keep getting better and being available for us. Titans' leading tackler in the ball game was David Long. Eight total hits, two tackles for losses. Here's one from 51. Yeah, just kind of, just again, to see the, the action on the front side, the knockback on the front side. And there's uh, Jeffrey, a guy setting a wall, and, and David. David was flying around. He was everywhere. He was knifing through. So uh, that's great to see. 
All right, let's do a little offense here with some of the running game, but it's not who you think it is. It's Dontrell Hilliard, who had eight carries for 83 yards, one catch for 12. This is a 30-yard run. Yep, we went to uh, run right there. They spiked, and look at these receivers down here, man. I just wish we could take this back right there. These guys are out there. It looks like a street fight, uh, barroom brawl. Guys are diving over each other. They're fighting to get knockdowns. Uh, but this was a great vision from Dontrell, great burst. Everybody's covered up, no penetration. You see they spike there. He's able to go over the top and outrun the linebacker. But the reason that he gains extra 15 yards is these guys are going to come into your screen right now. Cody and Nick, you know, knocking guys down, allowing Dontrell to get extra yards. Dontrell does not waste body motion. When he takes the handoff, he's getting north and south quickly. Yeah, and he's got, you know, I think his vision has improved. I mean, he just, he seems to continue to make plays for us. Showed up yesterday in the special teams as well. All right, how about a little more Jeffrey Simmons? Didn't practice all of last week. Still played over 70% of the snaps. Here he takes the team lead with five and a half sacks. Yep, we were able to get one-on-one -on -one here with uh, with the center, with, with Quiz. And uh, Jeffrey's penetration is, you know, rarely what caused that. But when we get these guys one-on-one, uh, -on -one, uh, they got to take advantage of it. And Jeff, Jeff certainly did. Jeffrey Simmons coming through the middle, making more and more big plays. And him being in there, not only providing numbers and big plays, but you have to account for him if you're the opposition. Well, you better. You better. And it's just, you know, his understanding of what we're doing, what they're doing, and just the, the development, you know, each and every week that, that I see personally. Um, he holds everybody to a high standard because you see him chasing to the football and and guys are coming with them. And there's and there's a lot of other guys that are doing that as well. Titan fans love him for good reason. Big Jeff, Jeffrey Simmons with another sack in the ball game, a 17-10 Titans win. Another Titan they love is Derrick Henry. He only rushed 32 times for 219 yards and two scores. That's all. You didn't see him in that segment? Well, we've got a king-size six-pack next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4 from the Bed MGM studio. Stay tuned. Mike Vrabel Show continues from the BetMGM studio. Glad to have you with us. Okay, we saw a six-pack of some of the best plays from Sunday's win over Houston. Derrick Henry matching an NFL record with his sixth 200-yard rushing performance, setting the franchise record with 75 career touchdowns. He gets his own six-pack. You said after the game, we, we have Derrick Henry. We do. I mean, these are hard to probably pick. We're probably tough to pick what six. What did we start off with, 13 or 14? And, got, and we whittled it down. Got down to six. Can't wait. All right, here we go. Now, the Titans didn't score after this run, but it really set a tone for the day. 41 yards, Derrick Henry. It did. And the thing is, you look here with the stiff arm, that's where we start to see. When he's able to stiff arm the post safety, these guys that are diving at his uh, knees, He's able to get that arm down and, and stop their charge. Something that we've been working on, and, and obviously in the past and this year, but you're going to see a great shot of it coming up right here. That stiff arm, those eyes are down, that hand's down, you know, and then he's able to run away from people. But a guy has got him to the second level, offensive line, and obviously the receivers and everybody included there. So His position coach, Tony Dews, works a lot on those little things, and he likes to work on those. He things. does. He's got a lot of time. I mean, there's the special teams area that uh, he's not involved in, and, you know, you always see Tony working on some details where it's catching, you know, catching the ball over his shoulder or whatever, you know, we're asking of him that week. Um, the stiff arm, taking his hand, you know, eyes down with the hand so that he doesn't miss it. Um, but I tell Tony, don't overcoach him. <laughs> Let's take a look at his touchdown run of 29 yards to tie the franchise record with 74 career touchdowns. Quite frankly, one of my favorites. Well, I mean, we get a good seal on the inside. Um, you know, Malik does a good job reading it. Malik reads it, kind of holds the end, freezes him. You know, Derek's able to get up the railroad tracks, which is the hash right there. And, you know, you see big Nick Petit getting to the second level. I mean, when that fella gets downhill like that into the second level, it's cool to see him make the post safety miss right there um, because that's the guy we haven't been able to get by. And I know Derek was, it was only a matter of time before he got by him and, and that showed up. Could not figure out how he got in here at the end. It looked like he would be stopped and he sort of pushed his way into the end zone, went right over the pilot. Yeah, and then other receivers down the field blocking, Chris Conley, Robert Woods. Cody, Nick, I mean, those, those guys did a fantastic job all day. The record-setting touchdown, number 75, comes on fourth and one. Any hesitation to go for it here? Nope, not at all. 
Um, love the play, you know, on t you don't see that very often in the, uh, on the goal line. So this is great execution. You know, the Todd knew what call he was going with. I went with it right away. I said, hey, we're going. Saw where Malik got out at and, you know, guys got everybody covered up and, you know, Raider didn't even have anybody to block except for get out of Derek's way. Touchdown, Derek Henry. Titans lead 14 to three at that point. Then three more Derek Henry runs. One coming at the nine yard line when the Titans begin what will be their field goal drive for their final points. Here we go. Well, a little counteraction. You know, you see him breaking arm tackle. You see guys getting to the second level, receivers blocking, Raider pushing piles. I mean, it's great to see this be 12 or 13 yards, uh, you know, right around the edge. So 13 yards on the play to the 22 yard line. He's just piling them up. Let's run, let's just run the next play. Just run it. Just let's just see it. Here it is. Derrick Henry again. Okay. Boom. Student body left. Stretch, cut, get downhill. There's that post safety again. He had a busy day. And, uh, you know, we just got to keep doing this and keep stacking chances up on top of each other. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be just fine. Derrick Henry picks up 12. Then later in the drive on what is the first play of the fourth quarter, Here's Derrick Henry for 17 yards. Yep, taking the edge there and able to break the tackle for the corner. One-on-one, uh, -on -one, trying to get his pads down. You see guys coming into the screen, trying to pu push the pile and, and, and protect Derrick. And, you know, that's the thing that I, I, I'm so proud of him is, is we give it to him and he protects it. And so that's not easy duty. And we keep working on it. Tony's going to keep working on it because, you know, that's when he has the ball with these – the hopes and dreams of the whole team are, are riding with it, so we got to continue to take care of it. He took care of it on Sunday in Houston as Derrick Henry has a great day in the Titans' victory with a lot of help. When we come back, it's time to meet our genuine Titan, presented by Epic Western. Played in his 200th NFL game. Find out who that is next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. We keep up with NFL player milestones largely through their statistics. And players know their stats, yes, but there are milestones that only players would understand in terms of things that they get done. In this week's Genuine Titan, presented by Epic Western, Amy Wells introduces us to a Titan who accomplished something on Sunday that every NFL player would admire. Morgan Cox is number 46 for the Tennessee Titans. He is 36 years old, making him the oldest player on the team. This past Sunday in Houston, Morgan Cox played his 200th NFL game, 189 in the regular season, 11 in the postseason, 200 games total. Well, it means a lot to him. Obviously, he's done it at a consistent basis, and he's been there and uh, you know, from a rookie when he went to Baltimore and, and played his first game till now, playing his 200 game with Tennessee. Uh, it means a lot to those guys because he's done it at a consistent level and a high level too, uh, that he can be able to play 200 games. Morgan Cox is not the first guy to play in 200 games and he won't be the last, but his commitment and work ethic are what make him stand out. He starred at Memphis's Evangelical Christian School before walking on at the University of Tennessee. Then he walked on in the NFL, making the Ravens roster as their long snapper. And now he's the Titans long snapper. He's been named to four Pro Bowls and has also once been named all pro. Morgan Cox has everyone's total respect. As a matter of fact, he is regarded by many as the best long snapper in the NFL. He's got a great work ethic that kind of, um, you know, gets pushed on to me and just kind of watching how he handles himself just how detailed orientated he is, you know, when he came from um, the Ravens with Sam Cooke and Justin Tucker, like they formed a special connection and I think he's passing that down and it translates on the field. Morgan Cox is more than just good at his job. He's a great teammate, a great husband, and a great dad. He's appreciative of where he is, so much so that he takes nothing for granted. Morgan Cox's consistent work on not just his snapping, but special teams overall, makes him very different. In the NFL, everyone has talent. There are a lot of good guys. There are a lot of guys who work hard. To stick around for more than 200 games, you need to be all of the above. And Morgan Cox is that, all of the above. 
a genuine type. Amy Wells, great job. I sit next to a man who played in 226 NFL games, 206 in the regular season, 20 in the postseason. You know what that means. Yeah, and I'm proud of Morgan. I'm, I enjoy coaching him. The biggest thing I can tell you is, as I should have done this earlier, I went back and named him our special teams captain. And that, that's how much uh, he means to this football team. It's how much he means to special teams. He's in every meeting, not just when he's needed on the punt team or the field goal, you know, the, the, the field goal team. He, he's into it. He can coach young guys every single position. Good guy. Great guy. Excellent football player. Morgan Cox, congratulations. 200 games in the National Football League. When we come back, time to know your foe. Sunday Night Football, Kansas City. We look at it next. Let's know our foe on the Mike Vrabel Show as we continue from the BetMGM studio. The foe on Sunday night, Kansas City. Seems like we play them every year. 7-20 start. They're 5-2. Coming off of a bye after a big win over the 49ers. Look at that. Patrick Mahomes has thrown 20 touchdown passes. Number one in the league. What a shock. I'm stunned by this development. But he's got a lot of guys helping him on offense. Clyde Edwards, a lair, and... The rookie, Isaiah Pacheco, and then Travis Kelsey and Juju Smith-Schuster. Yeah, let's not forget about Travis Kelsey. He spreads it around. He throws it to the guy that's open. Um, you know, they play all three backs. So, you know, number one in passing. You know, the thing that, that people don't really talk about these guys is their defense. Um, they stop the run. I mean, it's going to be a huge challenge. You know, they've seen a lot of passes, but, you know, they're, they're, they're up there in the league. Um, you know, they're, not, they're, they're, they're pretty stingy run defense. Um, they got a handful of Chris Jones flying around, and he's making tackles. But offensively, you know, it starts with the quarterback and making sure that we can find ways to affect them. They don't turn it over much. Uh, he's only fumbled twice. You play some quarterbacks have fumbled nine, ten times. So, you know, it's going to be a huge challenge. We're going to have to try to make them earn it, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Special teams important too. Always, always trying to go on a road, create some field position. Um, you know, force them to drive it, and, and, and hopefully we can, you know, get going where we finished the other day, uh, you know, get a punt return and some things like that. Keys to the game. The Nissan keys to the game at Kansas City. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. The Nissan keys to success on the Mike Vrabel Show. You're playing Kansas City. They have a great offense. You know they're going to try a lot of things. You got to make them earn it. What does that we, mean? We have to. We, I think you can see the success in the last couple of weeks defensively, when we force teams to string eight and nine plays together to try to go score. We've made some plays. We've tipped the pass. We've knocked it out of the quarterback's hand. We've intercepted the ball. Um, it, it's just about not handing them things, making sure that everybody's covered. We're not throwing it over. They're not throwing it over our heads. There's no missed assignments that we're tackling. And I think visually you can see that when we're able to play that way, you know, now we're able to regroup, give up, you know, eight or nine or 10 or 12 yards. Like that's not going to kill you. What, what's going to kill you against these guys is if we're giving up X plays and he's able to throw the ball downfield or we're missed tackles or, or we're busted coverage. So defensively, we, we have to make them earn it. All right. Offensively, you got to run the ball, right? You got to run the ball. Well, I mean, that, that's what we, that's who we are, you know, and it starts there. And again, we're going to try to create opportunities off the running game. Uh, we have to take advantage of those opportunities. Uh, whoever our quarterback is this week, that's going to be critical. Um, but, you know, you go on the road, you're, you're going to have to run the football. You're, you're going to play great defense. You're going to have to run the football, uh, chew up some clock. I mean, those are all things that we would do no matter where we're going, especially in the Kansas City hostile environment on Sunday night. Bottom line, though, is when you got Derrick Henry going in this offense – suddenly there were plays available down the field and you made them. Yeah, and we hit them and we just have to keep going. You know what I mean? We hit, hit a couple passes. I thought that there were some more opportunities there the other day, but you know, we'll have to continue to expand on those and, um, and be able to mix and stay balanced. And, you know, are we going to be able to run it as many times as, as good as we did? I don't know, but, you know, we're going we're gonna to try. We'll just see how the game goes. Final Nissan key to success is about special teams. Be special. I think we're close. You know, we, we've, we've got some really cool signs. We punted it. We covered our punts better. You know, Josh Thompson is really coming on, guy that we've just had for a couple weeks, you know, 
Chig and Dontrell and, and uh, Monty Hassan. Rice, Hassan. I mean, Hassan, you know, he's our player of our game in special teams. You know, three tackles, a rookie. Uh, thank you for reminding me. But he's gotten better. We just have to be more consistent. We, we didn't get a very good opportunity on a kickoff return, but we covered kicks well. Uh, we fumbled a punt. So it was like we, we did some things that were really good, and we did some things that were going to cost us. So hopefully we can put together that special, consistent performance on Sunday night. But Robert Woods did catch the onside kick. He came back and made a huge play. He Absolutely. Did. All right, Titans and Chiefs. Sunday night at Arrowhead, 720 is the kickoff time. For Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift Forward.